<coughs> Last one. Upbeat. Hey guys. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that was terrible. That was terrible. <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm going to the notch now. Here we go. Notch is always crazy. Don't worry about it. Don't freak out in the notch. It's all, oh my God, look at that. It looks hideous. You're in the middle of the notch. Of course it looks hideous. Just don't worry about it. Get to the lateral side. Stay on target. Stay on target. Stay Here we on go. target. Over to the lateral side. Ooh. Tell me the lateral side. Okay, yeah. So we'll finish up with that on the lateral side. And don't touch uh, me again. Okay, sorry, old boy. Sorry. sorry. Un unnecessary contact. <laughs> unnecessary handling. That's why the axial is so important because it shows you where you can come in to access a fracture. Climb over, climb over the top. Man. What's that? I put it on silent. <laughs> Hi guys, so this video is going to talk about using CT to assess bicondylar tibial plateau fractures. I still tend to go Shatska 5, 6, Pete doesn't like that. I generally talk about it, but I don't really think a Shatska 5 actually exists, but I'm sure it does, but uh, it's, it's an unusual feast and actually talking about bicondylar makes you feel, yeah. or indeed tricondylar is probably the way yeah. to think about these and, things. And this thing when they say the Shatska 5 doesn't exist, it's something that really that trauma surgeons really like to say, pure yeah. orthopedic trauma surgeon. I think <laughs> you're just being a bit of your own arse. Okay, we are doing CT assessment, but let's start with a plain x-ray. Remember last time on the plain films, we were talking about doing things from the lateral. So here's a lateral right there. Is it a good lateral? It is not a good lateral. Why not? Because there is one condyle there. There is the other condyle there. Yeah, yeah. They are not even in the same postcode, my son. Okay, great. But what we can see is we, we can clearly see two condyles there, can't we? Two tibial condyles. Okay, let's have, let's have a go at this. So I can certainly see a ar tibial articular surface there. Yeah, looks... Possibly a step down there. Yeah. Possibly something there. But I'm not going to be so bold as to claim that without any further imaging. Yeah, but, it, but it, this, this, this feels like lateral plateau, doesn't it? Yeah, I was it? getting there. I was talking about the medial side. Oh, sorry. And that feels like medial plateau. Oh, I'll jump you to it. I think that's What's, what I just said. There's one other striking thing on this lateral, which is... The tubercle. This guy here. Tibial yeah. tubercle. I had noticed. <laughs> it's like, you cash the obvious abnormality. Yeah, cash is the cash is the uh, you know the, the extensive mechanism king. So and and that to me, just for what it's worth, we'll come back to it. I'm sure would be do really well uh, with a couple of screws through there. Nice, but All obviously right. we need to. But I'm jumping the gun. We need to plan this. So we're gonna let's go. Let's head to the CT. Say to the streets the CT. <laughs> Straight to the CT. <laughs> Put your teeth in, love. This is a really nice bicondyla. It's actually not that displaced, so none of the fragments are hopelessly out of place. Uh, where do you start? It's all about where you start, isn't it? Because everything's broken. It's like, wh where's a good place to start? And I usually start... So I start on the medial side. I start on the medial I'm side. I'm going to fix the medial side first. Once you've got stability on the medial side, you can then build up your lateral side. Absolutely right. So we're going to kick off on the medial side, which of course is, is uh, over here. All right? So... Uh, let's look at that that medial condyle as we come through. As we as we roll through, you can see there's a little step off there, so it does need reducing. It's not like it's completely uh, unreduced, um, but uh, so the, and you're getting the impression when you look at that view there, just there at the anterior bit, you get the impression that it's wanting some kind of buttress plate running down here. Yeah. And the thing that I like about it in particular, particularly on the medial side, is that quite often when you get in there, you know that there's a bit there that you can physically key in. It's actually pretty solid once it's there. That's right. And yeah. put a plate on it. Absolutely right. Okay. So we know we can we can buttress that. Uh, the other thing, remember, we get from the coronal. So the coronal is telling us what the relationship of the medial femoral, con uh, medial tibial condyle is. But it also, remember, tells us uh, what's going on with the lateral joint line. So let's have a look at that. Um, this one looks okay, so we're sort of at the anterior part of the joint here. That's anterior, just underneath the patella. Lateral side is, is, is broken, but doesn't look too bad, does it? As I come across, what happens? You can see the width, can't you? You can see the, the tibial width there very, very clearly. As I go up, it is slightly depressed at the back. Mm. It's not depressed at the front, that's the front. But as I go backwards, oh, that bit is depressed, isn't it? Just there. Yeah. So and, there you is can, a, and you can see the clear, and you can see the widening. Let me just show you that to the folks at home, medial side, pretty well lined up. The lateral side, there's, there's clear widening there. Clear widening there, yeah. Okay, so 
if you were to think of this as purely as a Schatzka 2, or Sh 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 Schatzka, yeah, Schatzka 2, you would be thinking, right, I've got to, I've got to tuck this, this guy in and I've got to bring up my depression. But there's also a medial side. So I brought up the sagittal now. Okay, so, so I tend to go to sagittal next. Um, and again, you've got to start somewhere. So why don't we start with the, with the medial side? What are we expecting of a medial tibial condyle, a medial fracture? What are we expecting? Uh, we're expecting it to be displaced out medially, like we showed you just there, but we're also expecting it displaced posteriorly. That's where it usually goes. It usually goes posterior medial. Posterior medial. So let's have a look, see if it does that. Uh, here we are, there's the medial uh, uh, tibial condyle. There's the split, you can see that very clearly. And honestly, it doesn't look too bad. You can see this is actually the PCL attachment, that guy just there. This here is the PCL attachment, isn't it? But mm -hmm. often what you see is that running into the um, uh, the medial medial side. So I'm going to go back. I'm still staying with medial here. Uh, you can see it's honestly it's not particularly uh, displaced posteriorly. If anything, this is more uh, tilted backwards mm -hmm. rather than translated backwards. And the one thing is that if we can get this bit to key in, absolutely, that's, right. it, it can be like a keystone. It can be really quite solid. It's like. That's and right. then sometimes it won't move until you start to... And the other trick we're going to have to, which we'll talk about in the further videos, will be how do you reduce it? And, you know, are you using a bone hook, a periosteal, a bit of varus valgus, flexion extension, bump under the knee? Yeah. We'll come back to that later. Great. Okay. On we go. So that's the medial side. So the medial side looks like it wants a buttress plate anteromedially, weirdly. Normally one puts a posteromedial plate on, don't you? But here it's wanting anteromedial and you've got to go with the fracture rather than your formulaic view. Yeah, but I will reserve judgment until I've seen the 3D recon. <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm going to the notch now. Here we go. Notch is always crazy. Don't worry about it. Don't freak out in the notch. It's all, oh my God, look at that. It looks hideous. You're in the middle of the notch. Of course it looks hideous. Just don't worry about it. Get to the lateral side. Stay on target. Stay on target. Stay Here we on go. target. Over to the lateral side. Oh, look, we've got we've got that um, that that uh, uh, tuberosity, you know, the tibial tuberosity uh, extensive mechanism insertion yeah, that coming on there the that we saw on the X-ray. Uh, so I'm just going to breeze past that. Solid we know bits about of that. cortex. Solid bits of cortex that will jam in. Now we're on the lateral side. Yeah. Now we're on the lateral side, and what you can see is that uh, there you can see that posterolateral depression. There it is. This guy right here. That's the right. posterolateral. I thought you were trying to hold my hand there for a second. <laughs> posterolateral depression. There's also a bit of blipped up uh, uh, cortex right there, isn't there? This little, this little, this little, little tiddler here. Yeah. Um, he's going to need like, uh, like sort, sorting out. He's kind of been buckled upwards, hasn't That's he? That's the least of his problems. Yeah. Okay. Axial. What does the axial show us? It shows us the front door, but it also shows us the back door. The back door, which in a bicondylar is relevant. So. Let, let's run through. Again, where do you start? You can either start up on the femur or you can start down the tibial shaft. So I tend to start up on the femur, work do my way through. Oh, let's start on the femur then. There you go. Thank you. There's your femur. Because you know, you've got normality, you work your way down. Okay, fine, let's do that. And as you come down, we know from the osteology that the lateral tibial plateau is higher, so we should expect to see that first. Yeah. And if we don't, then it's depressed. Okay, great. Well, it's fair to assume it's depressed. Yeah. Can't see it yet. Agreed. Must be depressed, and we know it's depressed from the other views. Absolutely right. But you also know that if I stop there, so this is literally we've just come into the into the joint here, into the into the proximal tibia. You can see there is no posterolateral tibia to be seen. There's no, no joint line at all because, of course, it is depressed. Okay. And what we're seeing here, axial is for front and front door, and particularly the, also the back door. Back door. Always remember the back door. Uh, in a bi bicondylar situation. Uh, why, why are we making such a big deal of that? Well, the, 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 fr the front door is, is this guy here, isn't it? It's this guy right here. So if you need to get into this fracture, that is possibly where you go in. I have to say though, it's very, very midline, isn't it? It's, it's sitting right underneath yeah. the extensor mechanism. Well, and also, you know, we've seen already from the plane films and the other views that the tibial tubercle fractures involves the tibial tubercle. Tibial yeah. tubercle. And me personally, I'd want to put two screws in that tubercle and just to bed it down. Brilliant, brilliant. Okay, fine. So that's that's one access we've got. If you look here, there's also there's also uh, this guy down here, which is also a potential access to get into the fracture, although probably Let's follow that, let's follow that. Where does it go? Okay, let's see where it goes. So we're right up at the top at the moment. Um, down we go. And as we, as we get there, um, uh, we've got we've got two two fracture lines coming in here. We've got the tibial tubercle that you were talking about, which is this guy here, Brrr, that dude, mm -hmm. yeah. But we've also got 
this guy, this guy here. In fact, just can be feminine as well. You keep calling him a dude. Okay, all right. Sorry yeah. about that. We're, Let's we're, we're, we're gender uh, neutral. <laughs> gender here. neutral here. Yeah. Okay, so I want you to follow that lady back up <laughs> and uh, see what happens to her. That's no lady. Here it goes. It's bigger and bigger and bigger, bigger and bigger and bigger, bigger and bigger and bigger, until it turns into almost the whole of that anterolateral tibial condyle. So that, that little wafer lower down turns into, and that was that little spike that we saw on, on, yeah, on the medial that, side that that's on blipped out, and it's the one we saw on the sagittal which was blipped forwards. The other thing that's quite nice is it looks like the, the, the medial chunk is quite a large chunk. It looks like it's a big chunk. It also looks like uh, the posteromedial bit, which we always worry about, which, and, and by, by that I mean this guy here, yeah? The posteromedial bit, which we worry about, looks fairly minimally displaced, doesn't it? Mm. Because I always worry that the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the this, this being the medial side, that the femur will fall off the posteromedial aspect if if that if that displaces. So one way or another, whatever happens in this fracture, we have to get some kind of fixation into this guy here, into this dude. And, and that pretty much confirms what you expected from the sagittal view, right? Yeah, absolutely right. Absolutely right. Great. So that that's the axial. Axial show us that shows us the way of getting into the joint. 3D recons. I have to say, the th in, in the bicondylar situation, the 3D re recon really comes into its own. It does. In a Chatska 2, you know where the plate's going to go. Uh, it's just a case of like uh, uh, of, of how you're going to get the depression up and how you're going to get the, the 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 widening sorted out. In bicondylar, it shows you where your plate goes. That is the point of a um, of, of the recons. Oh, that's the bit, the use of the recons uh, in the situation. So here we go. I'm going to roll you around. This is the this is the lateral side, obviously right there, um, and you can see this. Uh, it shows the, the the tubercle fracture very nicely, extending down the shaft down there. So that's the got the extensive mechanism on it. So we need to be mindful of that when we uh, put this back together again. And I would certainly want to put one or two cortical screws in once we've got our reduction just to hold yeah. that down. And actually I think you, you'd you probably want to start there wouldn't you? That's yeah. an easy place to start because it kind of sorts that out, makes it anatomic and then you can move on to the next Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. Yeah great. Okay so on we go round to the medial side now and you can see uh, and this is where, pretty much where I would start. I mean, you could put the tubercle down, but fundamentally, you have to sort the medial side out before you can go and get this lateral side correct. So like, always, do you always start on the medial side? I always start on the medial side. I think it's always. There's very few always is in life, but you, almost always, I start on the medial side. Yeah, and death and taxes. Death and taxes, yeah. There you go. And there it is, right there. You can see your, um, you can see your the, the, the bit you need to buttress is just there. And we saw that in all those other views, didn't we? Saw and that's that. going to lock in. The minute you get a ball spike on it, push it up, Heedem. click, it'll yeah. be solid. And if you were to draw your plate, it would look something like this, wouldn't it? Bang, 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 doink, 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 doink. Uh, buttressing down, wham. I still would like to see the back first before I Agreed. commit to that. Agreed. So, uh, round we go, and you can see... Now, in some situations, uh, in the bi in bicondylars, what you find is that the uh, the this this condyle right here has gone off posteriorly, and so you end up getting a step coming on at the back of the tibia. There's a big step that happens just here. Mm. In this patient, it's not that bad, is it? It's really not that bad. If I bring us round and round, there's definitely a fracture line there but it's not too bad. So this is the bit I wanted to see. If you keep going around where you were. Yeah. And you, you can see here that there's a little bit of instability here. Um, you've obviously got this, you've got this fragment here that you've talked about. Yeah. Um, and if we just go around a tiny bit more. So the question I've got for you, Pete, is are you gonna come up here and put a, a little T-type plate on there? And, and the answer is uh, absolutely not. There's There's no, there's no good fragment there to buttress, is there? There's no piece of, bo piece of bone that I can push up which will sort this out. I would agree with you that this piece of um, articular cartilage here does need reducing. That's that posterolateral bit we saw on the, on the, on the sagittal view that was, that was kind of shoved downwards. So yes, that needs bringing up. 
bringing that up from a posterior approach is unbelievably difficult. It it's yeah. much, much easier to do uh, through, through a window from the front. Yeah. So I would, I would, from the, if you can do anything from the back, for me, it is to buttress this guy here. Uh, and so right you're going to buttress there. So you're, this yeah. is, so you're, you're coming at this posterior medial. Yeah. The patient is supine or prone for you? Uh, so, so in, in, in my hands, I tend to do these uh, supine right. with the uh, with the leg up on a on a bolster. So the patient's a bit like that, yeah. with the leg with the tibia sitting flat, and I put a but a, a bump under their ipsilateral buttocks, so the whole leg kind of turns out like that. And then you make an incision more posterior than you think, mm. and that brings you in really nicely onto 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 that posterior yeah. posterior medial corner. Um, and we'll now, do a, we'll do a video on positioning. Absolutely, I'll do, do a video on, on on all of that. So having sorted out the medial side and put what I would expect is two buttress plates. My first one would go right here, and my second one would go right here. Mm -hmm. Having done that and pushed that almost uh, uh, Professor Griffin, our, our, our new prof, he talks about boxing in fractures. Professor uh, X. Professor X. Uh, he talks about boxing in fractures. Like, yeah. So you've got a big condyle which wants to fall off in almost in two vectors. You, rather than putting one plate, so if you were charging towards me and, and I just put up one hand, uh, as, I, as, as you hit me, you can roll off one side or yeah. roll off the other. It's actually, my plate has to be absolutely perfect in order to stop you. Whereas if I've got two plates and I stop you like this, it's much, much harder to get I out. I can't get past you. Yeah. Unless you're ticklish. That's right. <laughs> so boxing in fractures is the thing, and that's why I quite commonly use two plates uh, to contain one condyle. Show me the lateral side. Okay, yeah. So we'll finish up with that on the lateral side. Don't touch uh, me again. Okay, sorry, old boy. Sorry. Un unnecessary contact. <laughs> unnecessary handling. Okay, I know that we need to bring up uh, this this posterolateral stuff here. So we've got to get in there somehow, and this particular fracture is letting me in either here or right at the front. Let's bring that round. Uh, I think coming into this fracture. Um, here is is very is is very very difficult. I think that that's going to make that's going to be sitting right underneath the extensive really mechanism. Hard to go around you have there, to yeah. bring that whole well, thing have right up. Patella tendon and all. The yeah, and that, there. that's a big Not exposure. So personally, what I would do here to get at that posterior lateral bit, I would come straight into it. I would come straight into there where the comminution is, yeah. and I'd put maybe a little laminar spreader just to open it up. Yeah. And you've got that, that split would, that we saw on the axial. That's right. And that, that lets you in. And again, that's why the axial is so important because it shows you where you can come in to access a fracture. And and, we, and show me your plate. I, I quite like seeing the plate. Just you like seeing the plate just, just for, for closure. Hand. Okay, just, just for, for closure. closure. I've got a plate coming down there, and he kind of like he he, he, bobble, he, do, he does that sort of thing. Doesn't Anatomical. He? And obviously, well, we're making sure that we're overlapping the plates to avoid yeah. a stress riser. I, and nearly always long on the lateral side, right? Yeah, I tend to go long. I tend to bring him right down. You go really quite long. I actually. go really quite long. I go almost ludicrously long because yeah. because you're that way you're putting screws in outside of the zone of injury. Yeah. So you're putting screws right in uh, down here. And, you're, and you do a lot of your lateral side mepo, don't you? A lot of the time. Yeah. So I, t I tend to make the medial is more of an extensive ex approach. That's right. And the it's it's got to be small. open because you've got to yeah. And these are stab incisions distally. Agreed. Great. All right. So that's how we would do that. So that was a relatively straightforward bicondyle. I'm just going to show you something a little bit more complicated. Okay, so I've, I've picked, I've picked a, uh, the, sec the second case is a little bit more complicated. Uh, and so here are, your, here are your plain x-rays. Anything to get from those? Yeah, it's, it's fouled up. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, I mean, that, that AP view is, and this is what happens when you have a slightly sublux knee. It gives you a crazy view that you really can't make very much, much out so of. So let me, let me have a go at this. So if I go to the medial side, I can see in the central bit, there's a bit of articular surface there. I can see that there's a bit of medial there, and then yeah, that is the medial cortex, yeah? Yep, agree. So there is quite a comminuted medial sided fracture. Go to the lateral side, and what I see on the lateral side is that there is a fragment that's there. Yep. Some sort of discontinuity there. It's clearly much wider yep. that you can see out there. It's depressed, it's stoved in, it's messed up. Yep. 
Great. Tell us about the lateral. Well, the, the lateral tells you why the AP is such a mess because it's, it's subluxed off the back, hasn't it? So the knee has comminuted the posterior part of the tip, uh, proximal tibia. It looks as though, on, on the basis of these, that actually the top end of the tibia, the, the anterior bit of the tibia, looks like it might be intact. Mm. Uh, but clearly, uh, you can see both the uh, uh, both this condyle and this condyle. I'm really not sure. And, and this condyle. Um, and it's, it's, it's impossible to know exactly which is which at the moment, uh, are subluxed off the back of the tibia. Yeah, it's clearly the patient's in pain, yeah. high energy injury, clearly difficult to get some right Im any imaging, not in any kind of plaster at the moment. Yeah. But if I draw out the fragments, fragment there, fragment there, something there, something there. Yeah. It needs a CT. It tends not to be helpful, does it, in, in this setting? No. But before getting my CT, I probably would attempt some kind of reduction. A CT is a much more powerful tool if your, if your joint is at least partially reduced. So, so I will be getting this into extension with a little bit of traction, yeah. putting it in plaster, and then getting my you CT. You can see from that lateral there that the knee's in, you know, 80 odd degrees of flexion there. So if you get that knee straight, you'll, it'll be more, it'll, be, it'll help with the pain relief, you'll help the soft tissues, and it'll help with the, uh, get interpreted imaging. Yeah, great. Okay, on to CT. CT. So this is a more complicated fracture than the one we saw earlier. Yeah. So let's start with the uh, coronals once more. Yeah. Just draw, scroll us through. You can see there's right. a, you can see already there the, the increased uh, width of the tibia, and you can see the lateral tibial plateau chunk there. I would wager there's more to it than that. Yeah, and remember we thought from the from the AP films that we thought the, the nonsense here is probably more posterior than anterior. So why don't we start with intact bone, let's start anteriorly. So uh, let's go to the front of the joint, there we go. That's the very, very front of the knee. And as you can see on the medial side there, Normal. You, you, yeah, that's right, Doesn't there's no, there's, no real, there's no real fracture, is there? There's nothing, nothing going on. So the anterior, and indeed, you look at the lateral side, maybe, oops, uh, maybe there's something going on down here, mm -hmm. but uh, the, the lateral side again. So the anterior part of this knee doesn't look too bad, does it? No. Okay. So let's scroll through. To so the let's back. scroll through to the back. Uh, we, we, we can see there's clearly some um, uh, some, s some stuff going on the notch, and then suddenly everything disappears. Uh, we're getting into the, the medial side has almost vanished. It goes from there. Look at the height there, and as I come through, it disappears, and then it reappears much lower down. Yeah, and further back, and further back, exactly. And laterally, we've we've got what appears to be something that's sloping high down to low. Yeah, and then comminution as you get further back, high up here, and as I go down, it goes down to low down here. And obviously, the femoral condyle has sunk into that. Um, Again, what do I get from the coronal view? The thing I really get here is on the lateral side, uh, uh, is, is uh, uh, again that the, 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 the tibial widths don't look too bad, do they? That the, the, uh, the you know the width here looks 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 okay. Um, it's, it's a little it bit wide, but particularly what I get is is the personality of this. Sorry, is the personality of this condyle. It, although it's down and although it's bad, it looks like it's all one fragment. So let's okay. go to the sagittal. sagittal. Let's start on the medial side again. So um, we can see here, there's a, there's a lovely chunk here, isn't there? There's, there's a lovely chunk there that, that we can look like yeah. we do something for. Scroll through and let's have a yeah, look. Yeah, that's right. So it looks like two fragments, doesn't it? But of course, mm -hmm. the, the front of the knee joint, that guy there, the, this, this piece here, is part of the proximal tibia. That's actually mm. intact. It's almost like a type B type fracture. It's not actually complete articular. It's partial articular because mm. that's continuous with the with the tibial shaft. So the fragment here, as you say, is this guy here. Absolutely. Um, so that's on the medial side. We've got a really nice fragment. Look at that. Oh yeah, that medial. And, and look where, this is a killer point. Look where the femur goes. Look whether which, which fragment the femur prefers. Does it prefer the anterior bit? No, sir. It prefers that posterior medial fragment. When you get these displaced posterior medials, the femoral condyle has always gone, has always gone backwards, backwards and medially. Yeah, exactly yeah. as that it illustrates it really nicely. And I bet you that medial side is going to look amazing on the 3D recon. I think yeah. it'll just be a, a juicy chunk. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, exactly. And just itching for a buttress place. Yeah. Good. Okay, so that's medial side. Over we go. Don't freak out when you get to the notch because it always looks bad. There's the notch. 
you can see there's also this big PCL attachment. Look at him. He's a he's a big old guy, or she's a big old girl, isn't she? That, that <laughs> guy there. See, I can't win either way. You can't, can't win. <laughs> and then over, across we go uh, uh, past the past the notch and onto the lateral side, and this makes perfect sense now. Again, so what do I get from the sagittal? I get from the sagittal what what the tilt is on that uh, lateral depression. It describes that lateral depression it, it, nicely and says yeah, It's how, kind of gone from there to there, right? That's, so that's right, exactly right. And if I'm going to punch this up, how am I going to punch it up? Be, be my punch. I'd love to be your punch. <laughs> oh. About Boom. there. Coming right up there. Exactly right, yeah, that's it. Nice. So th this guy wants bringing up at the back, doesn't he? At the front, he's not too depressed. And then there's a little bit of mischief going on with this piece, isn't there? Agreed. But you get the impression. But look how on the lateral side, that's where we are now, look on the lateral side, how the femoral condyle, the femoral condyle does not want to go backwards. Yeah, it's pretty central, isn't it? He's pretty central. He tends to stay there. So if you're able to bring this guy, as you say, up to meet it, everything will be good. Um, so, uh, so uh, I, I guess your question is, do I need to buttress that fragment back? Anyway, let's axial. have a look. This will give us femur. I like it. Start on the femur. Start on the femur. Down we go. We hit the tibia, and again, what we what, exactly as we were expecting, the front part of the tibia is intact, in continuity with the femoral shaft. Intact so that's, all. That's your constant fragment, you might call it. Yeah. Uh, on we go. Down the tip, uh, down into the tibia, and as we go, what we see is those uh, those doors, those exit points where where the fractures exit, and you can see exactly as you as you were hope as you were you were expecting to see on the other views. Uh, this guy exits right here, so you're gonna that, that your plate wants to be more posterior. You know, if you were to draw where your plate belongs, yeah, I, was, I was gonna ask you, draw on here and fire your screws. Yeah, so my my plate it really does belong. Somewhere back here. Where, you, it? where are your screws going? Screws are going boom across there, aren't they? And that like also that. illustrates a really nice point, which is that you can't catch that posterolateral fragment with the posteromedial plate. Correct. That's right, because they're, they're going in that, that vector. And so I'm talking about sometimes people will think, well, okay, look, I'm going to get a screw across here, and that's fine, but it ain't going through this. It ain't going through that plate. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Good. Okay. So so and so I think now we have an idea of how we're going to contain this fracture. Uh, but the, the killer view is always, in the bicondylar situation, when you're trying to decide where your plates go, this is the view you want. want you, this you, is the money shot. This is the money shot. And again, don't, don't go lateral to begin with, go medial. So, there's the anterior bit of medial tibial plateau, all completely all normal. intact, all yes. normal. Round we go. There's the subluxation. You can see that medial femoral condyle has fallen off because he's buddied up with the posteromedial uh, bit of tibial plateau, and that has fallen off the back. We can see a really juicy chunk there. Look at that apex there. Look, you can see where he would just see right just in there. Can you just see just inside that, there where, yeah. where that guy belongs um, and where that apex keys in? There we go. Round well, we go. I'd suggest it maybe even keys a little bit further. Yeah. Round. Uh, yeah, you could you can almost, almost peek underneath. Yeah, if underneath you, if, there. If you really wanted to, you could use the software to subtract this bit of bone and, and see exactly yeah. where it belongs. But you, you know that that's where, that's where it goes. Yep. Um, and then as we go round... So you're putting a buttress plate there. Yeah, absolutely. Draw yeah, a plate I'm just, for I'm me. I'm just going to bring this, straighten this yeah, guy up a little bit. There. there we are. I don't have to do this. <laughs> yeah, that's breaking it. So if, if, I, if I'm buttressing this guy, uh, or, or indeed uh, gender neutral fracture, I would be going something like that. Straight on there, uh, just over where the remember the apex the, the apex of the fracture is just is slightly more uh, medial than that guy. Now, uh, yeah, you want to get rid of that? Sure, we can get rid of Thank that. Thank you. All right, get rid of this. Uh, lovely job. As, as we come round, so the thing I asked you about last time. Yeah. So the question a lot of people want to know is, okay, I'm going with posteromedial plate. That's yeah. pretty standard for a bicondylar. Yeah. Do I need to go right round the back to put on a T plate and yeah. buttress something up right at the back? In which okay. so. I maybe have to put the patient uh, prone initially and then turn them over and come super yeah. up the lateral side. Uh, absolutely right. So, uh, and, and or, or can you fix this, this fracture all from the back? And we will, we, uh, I'll show you what we did for this fracture on, on another, another um, uh, forum. But um, here we go. You've got this piece of um, posterior, uh, posterolateral cortex, this guy here, 
who has been blown out backwards. Well, still, that's still relatively posterior still, isn't it? It is quite posterior. You've got and actually the lateral femoral piece. condyle hasn't subluxed with no. him, so you don't have to go after that. But underneath him, if we, go, or if, we peek, if we peer over the top, here we go, you can see, remember that impacted bit of posterolateral uh, joint line? Here it is, this guy here. You can here. see where the condyle's just gone into the plateau. That guy there, oops, it, yep, just, just there. You can see uh, that needs bringing up. So in, in my hands, what you could do here is through your posterior approach is you could just reflect that um, posterolateral cortex out of the way, bring the joint up, and then buttress it back. And me personally, this fragment, you can see is angulated posteriorly. It is, and we I'll, saw that on the sagittal, didn't we? We did, and that's the one that I would, re I would really want to push that back up there and then support it with a, with a T-plate or something similar. Yeah, but you want to bring, it, bring the joint up first. Of course. Great, okay, so I think we've, we've got a plan for the, for the medial side. It's probably gonna get two plates at the back, this one, yeah. isn't it? It's probably gonna get one right down, straight down here over that apex and one over here. Can you do it in one colossal plate? Yes, you can. But the trouble about a big old, big old T plate is like doing anything in life. You try and do two things at once, it often does neither job perfectly. Yeah. So I tend to go individual, do one fracture, then do the other one. And, and also, you know, we're doing a disservice. The anatomical plates, particularly posture immediately, do fit really well, don't they? Uh, so they do if you get them in the right place. Yeah. I, I tend to find I, that I, actually... I only put them in the right place. <laughs> Great. Show round we the go. lateral side. Okay, round we go to the lateral side. And once you fix that, we've got a really solid foundation. We've got a really solid foundation. Um, you may have the, done the, some of the lateral reduction yeah. already. So, Honestly, the lateral side, you know, you could imagine doing a lateral approach here and you wouldn't actually see a fracture. There's not, there's not much going on, is there? No. There's, there, is, there, there is a small fracture line just here, yeah, yeah. but it doesn't really lead you directly. In, in order to get inside that fracture, uh, you would almost need to sort of climb, over, climb over the top. And actually getting at that, that impacted fragment, which you can just see hanging out inside here, um, is actually very difficult from anterolateral approach. So you'd have to make, ha make a call on this. Are you gonna try and bring it up from posterior, which would be some people's preference, mm. and certainly mine, but you could also say, I'm gonna bring it up from the anterior aspect uh, with a punch, and then I'm gonna uh, put my lateral plate on in the usual way. And I think there's one final point to make with these is that generally we don't go after the postural fragment. Agreed. And that's something we're gonna talk about in future videos. So don't leave here thinking we must fix 100% of, of the plateau. Postural fl uh, fractures, agrees. Absolutely not. Save yourself a lot of ball ache. Yeah, great. Okay. Nice. Done. Okay. Okay? That's it. All done? Yeah. That's a wrap. That's a wrap.